equals sideways, this is what I'm asking you to do. Graph y equals 2 cos of x plus 1. That's kind of dying on me. And list its characteristics. Characteristics. Solve for x and y intercepts algebraically. Break alley. Mm. Two times the cosine ratio of x plus one. Okay, down here on this side, I just want to graph. Let's start with what you learned yesterday and see if we can pull up what is going on here. So, let's graph the original cosine graph, which you learned yesterday. Malachi, can you hit the lights? Yeah. Thank you. So remember I told you, so we're going to do a transformation. There we go. Transformation on this cosine. So let's start with the original cosine function that we were doing yesterday. So remember, break this up into four pieces. 90, 180, 270, and 360 degrees. And we're going to go 1 and negative 1 here. And what you needed to do yesterday was remember, we just need these five points, right? And then just make a nice smooth curve. And you need to remember that the cosine starts at 1, goes to 90 and 0, down to 1. And make yourself a nice smooth curve. So that is the original cosine graph. And then it just keeps going on and on, right? It was just that smooth curve. So that was yesterday's. So I'm going to show you what happens when we do this transformation. These two numbers here, this 2 and this 1, is doing something to the graph. So let's start with a table of values and show you what happens. And we're just going to use our x values are our angles. So the angles we're going to use is 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees and 360. Oops. Okay, those points. You know that the cos of the angle, you now know what those are. I can just look at them on the graph, right? When the angle is zero, the cosine of zero is one. When the angle is 90, the cosine ratio of a 90 degree angle is zero. The cosine ratio of 180 degrees is negative one. The sine is zero. I'm sorry. The cosine ratio of 270 degrees is zero. And if I plug in the 360, I'm back to one. Okay, that's the general cosine function. Those are the points that we use. So now what I'm saying, well, what happens to that y coordinate when I times, this is what I'm looking at, what happens to the y coordinate when I take the cosine ratio, I times it by two and add one, because that's my new y coordinate. The x never changes. So y equals two cos x plus 1 is just a formula, right? 
So what you're doing is, oh, well, your y coordinate now is 2. The cosine ratio when the angle is, angle is 0 is 1 plus 1. And you get these new coordinates on your transformed graph. The x never changes, but now I have 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. And I'll go plot that. So I'm going to scale this to 3. And now I have a point at 0, 3. And I do that with the all five points. I'm just plugging it into the, to the formula, right, which is what the equation to the function is. It's just in a formula to tell you how you get the y coordinate when the x is, in this case, 90. So that's y equals 2 times the cosine of x. Well, the cosine of x is 0 plus 1. And again, the 90 doesn't change. And now you have a coordinate at 90 and 1. And you plot it. Cos of x at 180 degrees, the cosine ratio is negative 1 plus 1. Again, your x's are never going to change. You're going to always use these x values. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And then you just go plot it. 180 and negative 1. It didn't change. It actually ends up being at the same spot. Just for reference for next year, when we do a transformation on a coordinate and it doesn't change, it ends up being in the same spot as where you started. It's called an invariant point, as in it didn't change, invariant. And we just keep doing this, y equals 2 times 0 plus 1, 270 and positive 1. And then the last one, y equals 2, cosine ratio of 360 degrees is 1. And you're back up at 3. Okay, so you have these new five points, and we just connect them as a curve. And you just graph the transformation of the cosine function. So when you look at this, right, look what was happening with my table of values. I could have done it from my graph. This 2 right here in front, that 2 is your, let's call it your A value. It's the same, it does the same thing for this function that it did for your quadratic. It is a vertical stretch stretches it. It does the exact same thing as when we were doing our quadratics and we were stretching them or flattening them, right? Your A value. That is your vertical stretch. This one is your vertical shift. And those are the only two transformations we're going to do on, cos or on our trig functions this year. We're going to stretch it vertically, and we're going to shift it vertically. That's all we're going to do uh, in grade 11, right? So look, I could have done it from here. If I knew my first original graph here, my cosine, I take my y coordinates, because my x's aren't changing, take my y coordinates, times it by the 2, and add 1. That's what it's telling you to do. Take your original y coordinate, what your cosine was, multiply it by 2. So 1 times 2 is 2, and then add 1 is 3. 
90, right, your y coordinate is 0, 0 times 2 is 0, plus 1, move it up. You could have done it right, so right from the graph, 180, right, your y coordinate was negative 1, times by 2 is negative 2, plus 1 puts you right back. So you can either do the table of values, right, but you can see if you know the original graph, we're just changing the y coordinates. You can just punch in your graph, your original, and then again, multiply your y coordinate by 2, and then add 1, and then there's your new graph. Multiply y coordinate on original function by a value, then add or subtract. I'm going to call this a d, just because a d value for new coordinate. X's remain the same. So we're going to run every single one of them. So I'm just going to call that plus number at the end. I'm going to call it D. Okay, we're only changing the Y coordinates. The X's are never going to change. Okay, that's how you graph them. So let's talk about their characteristics. Because a few things have changed here now, right? Looking at your graph. Your characteristics, you'll need to know your domain, your range, your max value, your min value, the period, your y-intercept, and your x-intercepts. Okay, those are your characteristics. So the domain never changes. That's what the arrows are representing at the end there. The domain of any of the sine and cosine function goes on forever. So that hasn't changed, and it won't. Just like with the quadratic, remember it never changed either. The range is your y coordinates. Well, you can see my smallest y coordinate is negative 1. But now it goes up to 3 because of the stretch and the shift. So the maximum value is at 3. The minimum value is at negative 1, right? The endpoints of your range is your max and min value. The period this year is never going to change either. The period is how long until the graph repeats. Well, it repeats every 360 degrees. I can see my y-intercept. We're going to write. Your y-intercept is right here at 0 and 3. And, of course, the algebra to solve for it was right here because the algebra, right, is setting your uh, cosine ratio to zero. So what I mean is when I have y equals 2 cos x plus 1, right, that was the function. How do we solve for the y-intercept in anything? We set x equal to zero. That's how you do it, right, no matter what the function is. So I get y equals 2 times the cosine of 0 degrees plus 1, because your x's are your, your angles. And then when you go solve, you tell me you start with what is the cosine ratio of a 0 degree angle. So you need to do this first. Cosine ratio of a zero degree angle is one. And that's how you got your three. 
but that's how the math looks when you're solving for a y-intercept. We do the exact same thing. Wherever your x is, you set it equal to 0, and then you simplify. Okay? So the last piece is your x-intercepts. You see them right here. Like, I have two of them. Right? Uh, right here, 1 in quad 2 and 1 in quad 3. How do I solve for those? Solving for x-intercepts. How do I solve for an x-intercept of anything? How do I solve for x-intercepts? I set y equal to 0, yes. So I get my function y equal to 2 cos x plus 1, set it equal to 0, and you need to solve for x. But now we're back to what we were doing last week, solving a trig equation, right? Remember, the x-intercepts of the function is actually the solution to the corresponding equation. Right? Just like your quadratic function, right? The x-intercepts of a quadratic function are the roots to the quadratic equation. This is the same thing. So how do we solve a trig equation? You isolate your trig ratio. You're always going to move over. So I've got negative 1 equals 2 cosine of x. And then you're going to divide out your 2, and you get negative 1 half is equal to the cosine ratio of x. That is one of our exact values on your unit circle. So you should know automatically that negative 1 half, the reference angle, and then the quads are 2 and 3, right? So, isolate your trig ratio, find your reference, which is the cosine ratio of, or inverse of the cosine ratio, which you know is 60 degrees. If you can go right to the 60, you don't need to show this. This is what you would need to do if you needed to use your calculator, right? Then you're in quad 2, and you're in quad Three, because that's what the negative tells you. In quad two, your angle is 180 minus the reference, and in quad three, it's 180 plus the reference. So your angle is 120 degrees, and your angle is 240 degrees. Oops, sorry, I used x's again, or theta's again. I'm doing x's, sorry. So when you solve it, take a look up here. It makes sense. This x right here, you're in quad 2, and I'm saying this x is 120 degrees. And here's the one in quad 3. Right, which makes sense. It is at 240 degrees and zero. Which you see, they kind of line up quite nicely. So your x-intercepts, 120 degrees and zero. And 240 degrees and zero. But this is how, what you were doing, solving your equations all the time, right? Find the reference, find the quads, use your formulas, boom, done. So it's putting the two pieces together, right? Solving equations and, gra and finding x-intercepts on a function are the flip coin always of the same thing. All right. Now we're into it, aren't we? Okay. Let's end. We're just going to try a few of these, right? So, 
graph y equals, mm, let's do negative 3 sine x minus 1. Hmm, let's try that. Negative 3 sine of x minus 1. And list its characteristics. Solve for x and y intercepts algebraically. Okay. First thing you're going to do, start with your original sine graph. All right, we can put that over here. Okay, do your x-axis, that's not changing, 90, 180, 270, 360. We change this x-axis next year, but this year we're not doing that. Okay, make these small, 1 to negative 1. And just put in the original sign graph so it's there as a reference for what you're going to do, right? So you need to know, the thing you need to remember about the sign is it starts at zero, zero, goes up to 90, back to zero, zero, right? Negative one and zero. So what you need to remember, really the only thing you need to remember is that is what your original sign graph looks like. So I'll show you the shortcut. Instead of making the table of values now, right? What I'm saying is you know that this, this is your A, negative three is your A, and this is your vertical shift. So you know you're going to multiply all y coordinates, multiply all y coordinates by negative 3 and then subtract 1 to get to your new y coordinate, leaving the x's the same. So we're going to need to scale this a little bit. Negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, 2, 3, 4, let's go to 5. Okay. So I'm saying from this point, right, just put your finger on it, your y coordinate is 0. This is telling you multiply 0 by negative 3, 0 and then subtract 1. Oh, there's my new y coordinate. X's don't move. This one, right, my y coordinate is 1. Hmm. Multiply 1 by negative 3 is negative 3, and then subtract 1 is negative 4. X remains the same. So instead of making the table of values, I'm doing it in my head, because you're just multiplying it and then adding and subtracting something. Again, 180 is 0, so it's going to end up being the same as this one, right? Because negative 3 times 0 minus 1. And in fact, the 360, where my y is 0, right? It's going to end up there. So the only one I'm missing is the 270. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. Subtract 1 is... 2. And connect the dots. Go down, up, arrows. 
because that A and D, right, that vertical stretch and that vertical shift on this graph is doing the same as it was on the, vert, on the quadratic. A value of negative, negative flips it upside down, flips the graph upside down. It's a vertical reflection. The three is the stretch, right? Minus one. So you're, if you were to describe this graph, you would describe it exactly as if you had done the quadratic, right? The negative is you have a reflection in the x-axis with a vertical uh, stretch of factor three and a vertical shift of minus one, one unit down. Doing the exact same thing. Okay, is everybody okay on actually how to graph it? Okay, so then we need to list our characteristics, right? Characteristics, domain, range, period, max value, min value, y-intercept, x-intercepts. Okay, domain never changes, it's everything. The range, I can take a look from the graph, right? Negative 4 to positive 2. The period never changes, it's 360 degrees. My max value is the largest value on my range. The minimum value is my smallest value on my range. So the y-intercept is right there at negative 1, right? But what does that look like algebraically? Because the algebra, the math, should match the picture, right? y-intercept, you set x equal to 0 in your equation. Then when you go to simplify, you need to start with what is the sine ratio of zero, which you know on your unit circle is zero. You have negative three times zero minus one, and that is how you got your y-intercept of negative one, algebraically. Is everybody okay there? Okay, let's go solve for the x-intercepts. You see they're right here, right? One happens to be in quad three, and the other one happens to be in quad four, right? How do you solve for your x-intercepts? Oh, you set your y equal to zero. So we have 0 equals negative 3 sine of x minus 1. How to isolate your sine ratio is always the same. You move the d, you divide by the a, right? So I'm bringing this over and I get positive 1. And then I divide, remember? So I get negative 1 third is equal to sine of x. Okay. One third you recognize right away is not one of our special ratios that you have to have memorized, right? So what does this mean? Dominic knows. What does this mean? Calculator question, right? Can't solve this without the calculator. So, what do we do first, right? Reference quads formulas, right? So, find your reference angle, which is the sine inverse of one-third. This is positive one-third, remember, because your reference angle is your angle in quad one. Okay. 
you plug that into your calculator exactly how you see it, right? Make sure you're on degrees, your calculator, which mine is not, right? Second sign, use your fraction key. That's why I made you buy this. One third, and there is your reference angle, 19.471. So look on the graph. That is not the answer. Guys, the reference angle is here, and this is not an x-intercept anywhere here, right? That is just what you're going to use to find the two x-intercepts. So once you have your reference, then you take the negative sign on the ratio for the quads. Sine is negative in quad 3 and in quad 4. Your formula in quad three is 180 plus the reference. In quad four, it's 360 minus the reference. So you just go punch those into your calculator now. And decimals, so rounding your final answers to three decimals. Remember, these are degrees. And let's see, this, these, so this is what we were doing to solve the equation. Now go look on your graph. It should make sense, right? Your two x-intercepts are right here. Look at your numbers. The first one was just shy of 200. Well, that kind of makes sense, even without it being scaled correctly, right? That's a pretty good estimate there. And the other one was 340. Well, there's 360, so that is not bad. And there you go. That is what your work should look like. How to graph the function, how to find the y-intercept, how to use all that stuff about x and like solving for trig equations. The whole time you were solving for trig equations, solving your trig equations, you were actually solving for the x-intercepts on the function all goes together. What do you think? Not bad. Yes? No? Okay. So, um, why don't you try one on your own? Let's graph y equals one half cos of x minus one and list its characteristics. Solve for x and y intercepts algebraically. So you can use the table of values or you can just use the graph, whichever way, right, that works for you. You need to be able to graph it and you need to be able to solve the x and y intercepts, right? I'm going to make your list of your characteristics. Domain, range, period, max value, min value, y-intercept, and then x-intercept.
should match what you're looking on in your graph, right? So, y-intercept, how do you solve that? Oh, you set x equal to 0 in the equation, and then you solve, right? And you start with what the cosine ratio of a 0 degree angle is. And your cosine ratio of a 0 degree angle is your 1. And there you have it. That's how you got the y coordinate of negative 1 half. Okay, x intercepts. Take a look. Are there any? There are no x intercepts on this function, right? Therefore, your math should match that. Always, right? The math, the algebra should match the picture. So, how do you solve for an x-intercept? You set y equal to 0. And then you isolate your trig ratio by bringing the 1 over first. Makes it positive. And then I need to get rid of my fraction. So, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And I get 2 is equal to the cos of x. Can you have a cosine ratio greater than 1? Does it exist? Right? Now that it's isolated by itself, remember all the way to the beginning of trig, never forget Pithy, right? And your Sokotoa, it all starts from there. Your cosine ratio can never be greater than 1 because there is no angle ever that will give you an adjacent side that is bigger than the hypotenuse, which is the only way you can have a number greater than one. Okay, everything goes back to that. That's, and you just reject it. You don't even have to explain it to me. You reject it. The cosine ratio of an angle cannot be greater than one. It just doesn't happen. Which makes sense because they don't exist. If the x-intercepts don't exist on the graph, then you shouldn't be able to solve it at the equation. Easy, easy, yes? Okay, one more. With everything in it now, because I wanted to show you what it looks like with no x-intercepts. Okay. So, graph y equals negative 6. What did I do, coast? Let's do a sign. Negative 6 sine of x plus 4 and list its characteristics solve for x and y intercepts algebraically Take a note at these numbers. Negative 6, that's a stretch of 6, and then shift it up 4, right? So your y-axis is going to need, I'm going to help you, it's going to need to go all the way up to 10, positive 10, and you know what I mean? And down to like negative, negative 2. So make your y-axis that way, right? That's a big stretch. So it makes sense that your y-axis is going to be, have to be scaled pretty big, okay? And okay, so there's my uh, basic graph, right? I just use it there for reference, right? Uh, if you wanted to do the table, that was fine too. But, so I'm at zero, right? My y-coordinate is at zero. I know I need to multiply it by negative six which is still 0, and then add 4. So I'm right there. The 90 degrees, my y-coordinate is 1. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6, plus 4 is negative 2. 180, I hope you realize by now I don't have to think too hard, right? 
if the zero, the, right, what, not, zero, 180, and 360 is going to end up at the exact same spot because your y coordinate was the exact same to start. So then I just need this one, 270, negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 6 is positive 6 plus 4 is 10. So you're way up there. And then you just connect the graphs. Nicely rounded. Right? And of course you have this big stretch of a graph because that was, it's reflected upside down and it's stretched by a factor of six. It's six times as long as it used to be and then shifted up four. So did you all get those literally five points you need to move? Okay. That was the hard piece, right? So now my range, I can just look on my graph. I know it's going from negative two to 10. Therefore, the maximum value at 10, minimum value at negative 2. At, uh, my y-intercept, I see it, it's right there, but I want you to practice using this stuff. This is y equals negative 6, the sine ratio of 0 degrees, right? Plug in 0 for x. You need to solve for this first. Negative 6 times 0 plus 4, and that's how you get your negative. Uh, yeah, hello, plus 4. <laughs> 0 plus 4 is 4 right there. Really, it's about the x-intercepts. They're right there. You see them. They exist, right? So, therefore, you should be able to solve them. Note also, one of them is in the first quad and one of them is in the second quad. X-intercepts, set your Y equal to zero. Isolate your trig ratio, which means you need to move the four over first and then divide by negative six. Have to do it in that order to isolate. Do not divide by negative six first right? Has to be the other way. You're isolating your ratio. Negative 4, 6 is positive would be the important thing. 2 thirds, it's fine if you didn't reduce it. Doesn't matter because you know you need to plug this into your calculator anyways. Because 2 thirds is not a value that I know. So then I go for it. Reference angle, quads, and formula. Sine inverse of 2 thirds. Plug it into your calculator, right? Second sine, fraction key, two thirds. There you go. Your reference angle, 41.810 degrees. Then, makes sense, your sine ratio is positive. Sine ratio is positive in quad one and quad two. Makes sense, because there's my angles, right? So quad one, my, they are the same thing. And quad two, my angle is 180 minus the reference. So And there's your 138.190. And these are your two x-intercepts that are sitting right there. Kind of makes sense, too, where they are. And that is kind of everything from this entire unit, right? Because it has your solving your equations, finding your reference, finding your quads, graphing the function, doing the shifts. Whew, wasn't that fun? Are you guys okay with this? Is there any questions? But look how brilliant you look. Show that to your parents on a Friday. They'll think you're brilliant. Okay, so... 
this is why I do the graphing uh, for these trig functions just on plain paper so that it's all kind of laid out there in one spot for everything to see. Uh, I find sometimes with kids, when they're using graph paper or line paper, they start getting a little mixed up with stuff. I don't know. So feel free to grab some if you want to practice. Uh, or you can do it on your own, whichever. But now your assignment will be in your booklet that I gave you. There is a graphing assignment in there. Uh, worksheet number nine, graph each function using degrees. Uh, and the answer is the pictures are on the back. I want you to go further and find me the x and y intercepts. If you're not, and always for graphing, actually I'm going to tell you the best way to check your work is actually to plug it into Desmos. So you can read off, click on your x and y intercepts instead of looking at the picture. I'll show you what I mean.